Good day, and welcome to today's webinar, DCI Debug for UEFI and Hypervisor Technologies on the Aon Up, Whiskey Lake, and Tiger Lake boards. My name is Michael Johnson, and I'm the Product and Support Manager for ScanWorks Boundary Scan Test for Asset Intertech. Asset is the leading provider of the ScanWorks platform for hardware validation and test, and the SourcePoint platform for software debug and trace. SourcePoint, the powerful x86 JTAG based debugger, is now more generally available to a broader audience, and you'll see a special promotion at the end of the webinar. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items so you know how to participate in today's event. First and foremost, today's webinar should run approximately 45 minutes. During that time, you will have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenter by typing your questions into the questions pane of the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation. We'll collect these and address them during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. And please be sure to download a copy of today's presentation, which can be found as a handout in the control panel of your screen. Also, We'll have an opportunity for a separate technical question and answer session with the asset engineering team at the end of the webinar on Microsoft Teams. You'll see a link for this during the webinar and in the presentation handout. Now, without any further ado, I'll turn the time over to our presenter, Alan Squinia. Alan Squinia leads assets business development initiatives for JTAG, inclusive of debug, test, and hardware validation technologies. Alan is a prolific technical blogger and the author of the Mental Board Chronicles. In his spare time, Alan enjoys doing deep dives into x86 and ARM architectures and UEFI Windows and Linux kernel reverse engineering. So with that, over to you, Alan. Oh, thank you very much, Michael, appreciate it. Good day, everyone. Uh, looks like we have a good turnout today, so let's get started. Uh, you should be able to see uh, my PowerPoint charts, and uh, I'm going to kick off with a handful of slides and then get into uh, some inter interesting demos on our SourcePoint platform. Uh, as you can see on the, sl on the slide, the uh, subtitle of this uh, webinar session is X86 Low Level Debug for Everyone. Uh, there's been a lot of work that's been going on over the last year really to improve the accessibility of uh, you know, learning and uh, delving into you know, some of the you know, low-level firmware and x86 architecture implementations, UEFI, Core Boot, uh, Slim Bootloader, and so on and so forth. Um, much more content is, uh, is going open source, and, and Intel in particular has, uh, has made a major investment in uh, bringing some min platform EDK2 implementations yeah, and uh, making them available to everyone. And what we've done as well at Asset is, is taken our source point product line, you know, which uh, is, is usually really the purview of you know, large enterprises. And uh, we've created a, a home version of the product you know, for hobbyists, makers, you know, individual researchers. And uh, we launched that uh, late last year and uh, now we've got a couple of boards that uh, the Whiskey Lake and the Tiger Lake boards that from Aon that you can run those on. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, let's start. Uh, let's go over the agenda. I'm going to go over some of the technology behind SourcePoint and Intel DCI or Direct Connect you know, interface. Yeah, you know, that's a a mechanism whereby you don't require an expensive hardware probe to connect. The source point you know, debugging application you know, into a an x86 and Intel target. Going to show some of the differences between Whiskey Lake and Tiger Lake because you know these two boards from Aon, you've got a choice really depending on what you're trying to do, you know which one to acquire, which would be a preferred. I'm going to be demonstrating UEFI open source you know Tiano Core debug on the Whiskey Lake board. So you'll see some of the source point capabilities on uh, run control, breakpoints, source and symbols, and so on. And uh, then we're going to jump over to the Tiger Lake board 
And uh, I think I actually see on the uh, attendee list, you know, some of my uh, fellow classmates who attended uh, Satoshi Tanda's hypervisor course, uh, early, you know, what was it, late last year, earlier this year. Um, yeah, he has delivered a, uh, an open source version of Midivisor for class attendees. And uh, it's a, you know, using SourcePoint in conjunction with that is a real learning experience on you know, doing you know, VMM-based debug. Towards the end, we'll go over the uh, references and documentation, and then we'll let everybody know about the uh, special offer, you know, which is pretty exciting. And then, as Michael said, we'll have an online Q&A with the asset team, the engineering team, and myself after uh, the webinar on Microsoft Teams. And there's the link there, and I think um, it'll be in the, uh, the handout sheet you know, that you can get by your control panel. I think Michael's put it into, the, or is gonna put it into the, uh, the chat box. All right, SourcePoint is a uh, very powerful JTAG-based debugger, you know, optimized for x86 architectures. And uh, yeah, recently we've added some functionality inspired by Satoshi to a great extent to add some hypervisor debug features into, uh, into the tool. And you'll see that when we get over to the Tiger Lake board and, uh, and show some of the new breakpoint types that are supported. Uh, SourcePoint, this, uh, the, the product has been around for great, greater than 10 years, much greater than 10 years. You know, extremely powerful. You know, there's a learning curve admittedly associated with it, uh, but you can get started very quickly. It's sort of like Microsoft Word. You can fire it up, you know, type in a memo pretty quickly. But there's a ton of features under the hood, right? You know, when you want to take advantage of uh, some of the more advanced technologies, especially for uh, for low-level debug and on the tray side. Typically, you can initiate JTAG-based debugging on a target, you know, via two two means, two access mechanisms. At at the top, you see you know source point connecting over a USB or Ethernet connection to the asset ECM XTP 3E hardware probe. And admittedly, that's a uh, an expensive probe. It connects directly via JTAG to an XDP header down on the target, and you know that's absolutely the uh, the most flexible and um, an easy way to uh, connect to the target, predicated on having open chassis access and a, an XDP header available that you can connect to. Uh, most publicly available boards, of course, don't have that. The uh, headers are removed. Yeah, during final production. But yeah, some number of years ago, Intel introduced you know, DCI, Direct Connect Interface, you know, as a means in the bottom diagram to connect a debugging agent you know, at, at a remote PC host and via just a specialty USB cable, thereby eliminating the hardware probe and um, saving a lot of cost. And uh, the trade-off, of course, is that the target itself you know, must be enabled via some you know, special you know, flag you know, fit settings and uh, BIOS settings, the, the firmware straps as it were, you know, in order for DCI to actually work. And, uh, and most, on most public boards, DCI is, is uh, totally shut off as a security you know, mechanism. But on these two boards from Aon, there's the, uh, the Whiskey League, there's a WHL Whiskey League board and a Tiger Lake board you can, uh, they actually are uh, easy enough to turn DCI on. So therefore opening up possibilities of investigation and understanding of on the metal type of debugging. The Whiskey Lake board, the Whiskey Lake chip is a eighth generation Intel core platform. It runs a version of DCI called DBC3, debug class three. The Tiger Lake board, TGL, runs DBC2. Uh, it's 11th generation. DBC2 is more advanced, advanced, you know, more robust and faster than uh, than DBC3. Yeah, if there's anyone on the webinar that's actually you know, done some work with DCI on some of the older platforms with DBC3, you'll see, you know, there have been, yeah, you know, issues with robustness and uh, and stability. And uh, you actually, you may actually see that today, you know, during the demo. Yeah, I run into uh, choppy C's myself sometimes. Uh, Murphy's Law jumps in and uh, inflicts some pain when trying to use DBC3, whereas DBC2 on the Tiger Lake board and later, it's uh, that's pretty rock solid. So, 
won't go into detail on this uh, this entire table. You'll have the handouts, I guess, of course, accessible to you at the bottom of your control panel. But just some differences between you know the the Whiskey Lake platform, the Up Extreme platform from Aon, and the Tiger Lake version, which is the Up Extreme i11. I mentioned the two different generations and DCI, DBC3 versus DBC2. Yeah, st stability on the Whiskey Lake. Yeah, it's it's mostly usable. You'll you'll run into uh, you know a little bit of flaky behavior and every once in a while, but uh, DBC two is uh, is rock solid. On this Whiskey Lake board that I have here, just on my desk, um, the image has been configured. Uh, you can't debug through a reset or a power cycle with the Whiskey Lake board. But uh, we've kind of worked around that and flashed that board with a, a dead loop at, right at the reset vector, as you'll see during the demo. So it just jumps to itself at the reset vector. And really, when you're doing your debugging, you know, being able to start you know, to halt the target in you know, early, early, early in the boot flow is, uh, is desirable. Whereas with the Tiger Lake board, DBC2, you can uh, power cycle the board you know, synchronously or asynchronously reset the platform. Uh, and DBC2 connection with source point will, uh, will survive through that. So, uh, yeah, so that's a nice attribute. Breaks point support for Intel is identical on both platforms. Intel processor trace, you know, which you'll see towards the end of the, de the demo is a uh, supported on both platforms running through into system memory. So you have to wait until you know, MRC is complete and uh, the memory is initialized. AET, Intel Architectural Event Trace, again, running the system memory is supported. The Tiger Lake with DVC2 actually supports Architectural Event Trace streaming directly out of reset, you know, running through that USB cable. So uh, yeah, if you want to debug out of early PEI, that's uh, that's the way to go. Uh, and Trace Hub, the, the Intel Trace Hub that supports AET yeah, and other trace features you know, has sort of the uh, the same attributes. Uh, the Trace Hub streaming trace out of the Trace Hub is supported on the Tiger Lake board directly out of reset, um, but not really yet on the uh, not on the Whiskey Lake board. Source code, uh, no, not yet on the Tiger Lake board. You can do some great things still, you know, working in assembler and with hypervisor debug on the Tiger Lake board. But uh, Intel, as I said earlier, has done a ton of work associated with uh, with bringing open source. Who would have known, you know, five years ago or so, um, you know, they're bringing open source you know, and bringing this to a wider community. It's still based on an older EDK2 tag, but uh, but it works and uh, tremendous le learning experience being able to see how the uh, how the source works. The Tiger Lake board does not have a serial console output yet until we get the uh, the source code done and the min platform done on the Tiger Lake. We'll be able to tweak this, but uh, but not yet. And the t at least today on the Whiskey Lake board that you'll see the demo on in just a moment. Uh, we don't boot quite up to the EFI shell. So we're uh, yeah, right at right before the EFI shell, that particular BIOS yeah, knocks down the XHCI controller. So you can get 99% of the way up, but uh, then if you don't, if you want to get into the shell, it uh, it kind of hauls. So if you want to do hypervisor debug, the Tiger Lake board at this stage of the game yeah, is the better choice. For example, yeah, you know, Satoshi's Type One pass-through hypervisor runs right on top of UEFI, and you enter the shell, and then run the hypervisor. So that's the uh, yeah. So that's the the Tiger Lake is the preferred platform for that. All right. Uh, so for uh, getting started, if you want to do this yourself, and and we absolutely encourage everyone to uh, to undertake it. I think. Uh, it's a uh, a lot. It's extremely interesting and a lot of fun. What you want to do is the first thing you'll need is the uh, a copy of the source point home license, and you know there's the link to uh, to to go ahead and uh, log in and pull that down. If you're using the uh, the Whiskey Lake board for UEFI development, right? 
purchase the uh, the Celeron board. That's the cheapest one, and Aon has stock of that. Uh, and there's the link in order to uh, purchase that. I think that board is between 200, 250 dollars, give or take. I think so. Uh, so uh, uh, much more affordable and uh, and easy to get access to than, for example, an, an Intel customer reference board. You'll have to go to the Data Pros website and pu and pull down, grab a copy of that, get grab a uh, that USB cable. Don't just use a regular USB off-the-shelf cable. You got to use this specialty cable with a V bus snip. It's that cable is about what 15 bucks, give or take. Uh, if you want to flash the board, the Whiskey Link board, and play with the open source, right? Change the code, see what happens, experiment. You'll need some sort of a uh, a flash, a spy flash. Uh, programmer, and uh, we've done use the Adeti Prolog SF600, but you can use Flash ROM. Yeah, any other programmer will do the trick. Aon has a kind of a custom uh, two by six spy header. Yeah, down on their designs, you're going to have to rig up a custom programming cable if you really want to flash. You know the Aon boards, and I haven't found anywhere you can actually purchase these things, but it's easy enough to uh, to fab up. The cable to fit on the uh, header, and then on the Whiskey Lake board, if you want to look, uh, if you want to see the uh, the serial output, you know, which you do, you know, with the image we're working with, right? It's a it's a debug image, so serial console out is is quite verbose, and you get to see a lot of interesting thing happen. So you got to buy that that optional cable, that cable for the serial out, and uh, and it's about ten ten dollars, so uh, fairly inexpensive. And uh, once you've got all your kit, you know, follow the directions in that last link, the blog in that last link down below, and that'll walk you through you know, step by step by step how to uh, get started, and you'll be uh, debugging open source to UEFI before you know it. Now for the demo, uh, we're going to be start first with uh, open source UEFI. You know, there's a that min platform. Open source EDK2 Tiano Core you know, uh, repository available. And you are going to see shortly very full source and symbolic debugging you know, using JTAG on that platform. Uh, for the, Then we're going to switch over to the Tiger Lake. We're going to switch targets and uh, we're going to be using Satoshi Tanda's you know, mini visor, hypervisor, as, a, uh, as, as part of the demonstration. And yeah, and it's not a totally fully featured, you know, hyper midi It's not a totally fully featured hypervisor. It's mainly a learning vehicle associated with the uh, with the courses, but it does support a lot of, uh, you know, VM exit handling based on the uh, on the list that you see here. And that's really part of Satoshi's uh, training course. Again, if you have interest in this, you know, I highly highly recommend it. It's really really worthwhile. And I know that his uh, next session that he's holding is up at uh, up in Montreal, Canada, at the uh, at the end of this month. Sorry, the end of May. Excuse me, next month. Uh, Recon, and uh, and that's the link that you would uh, click on to go ahead and uh, get your tickets. So uh, without further ado, you know, we're gonna uh, I'm gonna switch out of PowerPoint now and you know connect to my uh, Whiskey Lake target. And you know, this is a live demo, of course. And as I said, you know, Murphy you know, may exercise his laws, but we'll uh, we'll learn a lot, and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, see this all this stuff in action, and uh, and have some fun, hopefully. All right, the uh, first thing you're going to see here is right now you can see the you know, source point. Yeah, you know, this is opening up source point. Yeah, you know, no project loaded or anything like that. So basically, all you've got is a gray screen. I have a, a putty window open to a serial console output of the Whiskey Lake board over here. I also have a, a video capture card associated, uh, you know, with the HDMI output of the uh, of the Whiskey Lake board as well, the up extreme board. So, uh, so I'm going to boot up the target now, and it's going to halt at the reset vector because uh, I said, as I said earlier, you know, we've we've planted this image with a dev loop right at the uh, right at the reset vector so I may let me lean over here and uh, and power up and oh one last thing before I do you sh this is the uh, the DBC stat connection status indicator here that indicates whether we have a DBC connection 
between source point and the target. You know, right now it's red because the target is currently powered down. It should turn blue once the target powers up and, uh, and we, we create a, a connection between source point and the target. And it did, right? As you can see, you know, we have the blue ball now prominent. So uh, we can now, the target is powered up and now we go into source point and we load the project associated with this Whiskey Lake design. So what you're going to see right now down at the bottom left hand side of the system bar, you know, we have, uh, we're actually making our JTAG connection and we've got traffic going on, you know, between the uh, source and the target as the JTAG and sideband signals are exercised. And this is a uh, source point. I guess the, uh, the windows of interest primarily are the, uh, the viewpoint window. You know, we've got a, a four thread, uh, application here. The target is currently running. Yeah, you know, that tight loop right at the vector, right at the reset vector. We have the uh, general purpose registers as well as a bunch of other, you know, x86 architectural registers available to us. The uh, command window and the logs here. The code window here is uh, is where a lot of the heavy lifting is done. And uh, you'll see that yeah, you know, we don't have any code. And we just have question marks in the registers window because the uh, you know, the target is still in a running state. You know, we haven't done anything with the target yet in terms of halting it or stopping it and putting it into probe mode. So that's what I'm going to do right now and by hitting the stop button up here. And now you can see only one thread active, P0. It's in a stop state. And here you see the reset vector at 7F0 address. And this is a, the jump to itself. So it's just sitting there in that tight loop. I have to advance the instruction pointer. And there's several ways I can do this, but I'm going to just move the cursor down to the next instruction in line and right click and do a set IP. And you'll see the instruction pointer, which is that yellow bar and uh, line, advance. So we're out of the dead loop, and now we can mouse over to our single step commands. And as you can see, single step through the code. And we're right at coming out of the reset vector. So early, early, early in the process, loop cycle. Now I'm going to hit the go button and take us away from the reset vector. And you should see over here the uh, the putty output, the serial console output, and as I said, it's a debug image. So we got a a lot, a lot of a uh, lot of good UEFI messages coming out, and you got the source, so you could correlate those messages, you know, early, easily enough, yeah, you know, into uh, you know, into the uh, into the code, correlate the messages to the code. Now I stopped the platform. I don't know if everybody saw it or not, but I as soon as the piano core splash screen came up. Uh, coming out of the output of the HDMI port, I halted the target. So of course, you know, I'm stopping right here where we've got a lot of invocations to loading drivers, installing protocol interfaces and so on. So you know, we've, we've, run, we've run the target up into Dixie. You know, we've come out of PEI, PEI we're up into Dixie and uh, we've halted the target and now we can have do some really really good yeah, source level you know, debug sort of things with uh, with the target. Uh, one of the extremely uh, useful uh, useful facilities is the these macro buttons here at the top, right? Everything you can you see most of what you see within the GUI itself can be you know, emulated by uh, the 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 source point command language and macro language, and we've created macros. Yeah, that use the source point command language and associated, but with buttons with them. And you can add buttons, take away buttons, you know, do what you'd like. I hit the load current button. And what that's trying to do is to, is to do a mapping between this, the, the, uh, the, the source path of when the platform, when the build for this platform was done and where the actual source code is down on this local machine. It's quite common that they're not, they're typically not the same machine. You know, the machine that you, you build your, your 
platform image on is often a different machine, you know, for example, than the platform, than the PC that you're going to be you're running source point on. So you have to, uh, source point pops up this helpful message you know, telling you that, oh, okay, I've scanned the image. I'm looking for this, this pointer to the, the PDB file, the symbol file for Dixie core, but, but I can't find it. So help me, you know, point me to it. So when I built this image, this is the, uh, was, this is the path. I have to hit the retry button and I have to do, do that menu, you know, that mapping for it. So I scroll over to uh, firm up firmware two FW two, which is where I happen to have this. Uh, yeah, the, this is where I happen to do the build, and it would help if I could type or click, I should say. And what I'm just doing simply here is in both the log window and the command window, all right, doing this mapping and finding the Dixie Core B PDB file for source point, so it can uh, it can show me the source code and i'm in more mode my oopsie did i i went just one step too far let me try that again there we go core and dixie dixie main and debug and here's that dixie core pdb file so what you're going to see is all the assembly language you know that's in the code window here is uh is going to turn into source code you know once the mapping is complete and voila and of course my instruction pointer is uh, is right there and if i scroll up a little bit you'll see you know that i'm in you know this routine you know serial port right here and the instruction pointer is uh just happens to be sitting down here it's quite frequent when you do a a user stop as you can see from the viewpoint window, I hit the stop button myself. It will often stop in one of these, you know, serial out or serial in um, sort of uh, sort of routines, just simply because that's where the uh, where the code spends a uh, a lot of its time. So that was load current. I can also I have buttons up here also that will load the uh, the PEI modules and uh, and also the the Dixie modules, right? And do that mapping. You'll see no symbol information found, you know, in in a few of the modules, right? Just you know, simply based on the fact that this is uh, an F Intel FSP based you know, min platform. So, so there are some binary blob blobs, but we do have in fact a a fair amount of code there. I can also load in the, uh, the source and symbol information associated with you know with um the dixie modules as well so it's very fast now the source point database has access to all of the source and symbolic information right in the uh in the image you know to where we booted the date so uh so yeah enormous uh, amount of capability now to go into the uh, symbols window and you know, look at all of the globals associated you know, with uh, all of the globals that are associated with, let me open this up and show folks a, a little bit of information, labels, data, you know, routines that are, uh, that are available, functions, and so on and so forth. Also that the, the locals you know, that are available, you know, that are within serial port write function, the function that we were in you know, over here, and uh, and we can also have a look at the uh, the stack and uh, and get a bunch of information in terms of names, types of uh, param parameter types, you know, values, and uh, you know, return types. It, you know, you it's good to have more than uh, one monitor certainly when you're uh, when you're uh, working with this because there there tends to be a a lot of information associated with that thing. In the interest of time, I'll uh, I want to move over to the Tiger Lake boards, you know, shortly. But just to uh, to give a sense of the other capabilities inside of SourcePoint, it's a full you know source level debugger. If you've used any sort of a debugger, I think you'll uh, be very comfortable here. Adding breakpoints, you know, we can break on you know any and all of the uh, of the below, right? Yeah, 
instruction execution in, in execution in SMM, data access and data write, you know, both in regular memory and SMM, IO, same thing. We can, we can break, halt the platform, right? And then beginning the debugging process, you know, right for reset, platform init, SMM entry and exit. Uh, we don't use breakpoint in typically, power cycle, machine check, and the two new features that we've just added in this version 7.12.18 of uh, a source point is uh, a couple of new breakpoints based on you know, VM launch and VM exit. So we won't do that yet, but the other thing that I want to give everybody a heads up on, there's a lot of documentation on, uh, on you know, what's available within source point, you know, within the source point academy and uh, tons of videos and uh, getting started guides, user's guide, online help and so on and so forth. So you can read all about this, uh, but we support all of the trace features and functionalities associated, you know, with uh, Intel designs. You know, BR is last branch record. It's a uh, available directly out of reset. Instruction trace available directly out of reset, limited to about 200 and, uh, or 300 instructions. Uh, BTS, uh, kind of an older kind of branch trace store. The Intel Trace Hub, is you know where you have the ability you know for example to do at speed printf you know look at the me messages coming out of the platform and so on and uh you it's the platform that is used for architectural event trace you know which is actually my favorite kind of trace yeah in the context of you can you can uh instead of breaking instead of uh breaking as it were at a uh, at a particular event it can uh, it, just captures the event and the associated data along with it. You know, so for example, you could, uh, you've got an exception and you wanna capture the event and you wanna capture a couple of hundred, a few hundred uh, instructions leading up to the event, which help you identify the, uh, the root cause of, uh, of what caused the exception. So this is all trace, and in this case, it's an event trace instead of instruction trace. And then you've got read MSR and write MSR, some power management stuff, which is actually, uh, that doesn't work anymore, I think, in the most recent silicon, but port in, port out, code breakpoints and data breakpoints, you know, we'll have to try those because they're, they're great, and, uh, and so on. All right. Uh, in the interest of time, I'd love to demonstrate those on the, at this session. But yeah, if you're interested, go over to uh, Tacit's website, the SourcePoint Academy, uh, and you'll see a lot of videos, you know, webinar recordings, and uh, online help and users guide that you can uh, you can pull down. All right, so that is uh, just a tiny, tiny sample of the things that you can do now with this Whiskey Lake board and the uh, the open source you know, Tiano Core implementation that is uh, that is available to you. Now I'm going to switch over to the Tiger Lake board, and uh, the way we do that is we're going to do this in real time, so uh, it's pretty cool to see how this works. I'm going to close SourcePoint up initially. And uh, because I want to do a reset on the DCI connection on this target on uh, to, you know, uh, on on my PC, I should say, because right now we're going to be switching from a DBC3 connection you know, to a DBC2 connection. So I'm going to unplug. I'm going to power down that Whiskey Lake board, and I'm going to unplug as well the uh, the DBC3 cable to the Whiskey Lake board. And I'm going to plug in the connector to the Tiger Lake board for to the uh, to the my with my new specialty USB USB cable. And you might have noticed that the DBC connection status changed from the blue USB 3.0 to the green USB 2.0. And yeah, that's that's really good. That's what you want, right? We now have a USB 2.0 connection. To the Tiger Lake part target, and the Tiger Lake target is not even powered up at this stage, so it has AC power going to it, but it's not powered up, and and we still have that connection. Whereas with DBC three, you need power running the board to the board 
and the, the board to have at least started to boot to the reset vector in order for the DCI, yeah, the DBC3 connection, right, to actually have been established. Now I'm gonna, for the sake of uh, clarity, I'm gonna close up the putty window here because um, putty doesn't, uh, yeah, there's no, as I mentioned earlier, there is no serial console output going to the going to the uh, out of the sort out of the uh, the Tiger Lake board, but I do have the HDMI connector hooked up. I'm going to launch Source Point again and without a project, and I'm going to start to boot the. I'm going to start to boot the Tiger Lake board, and we'll keep our fingers crossed because on the Tiger Lake board, the HDMI output into my video capture card, which I'm using to display the uh, the output, the HDMI output of of the target is um, is uh, sometimes a little flaky. So we'll see if we uh, get console. All right, the Tiger Lake board is booting up. And at some point, we're going to see if the capture card worked well first time through. We'll see the um, the up platform splash screen come up, right? In which case, I'm going to have to hit the F7 key on my keyboard because uh, I actually have you know Windows installed on the Tiger Lake board as well. Yeah, you know, doing some Hyper-V debug. And I don't want to boot all the way up into uh, into Windows, you know, for this uh, for this webinar. So, as I've seen intermittently on and off, I'm not getting the output coming out of the uh, the HDMI port and into my video capture card and displayed here on my screen. So what I'm going to do, I have to, yeah, the way to around this is to uh, is to reset that connection. So uh, I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to do that by closing up the uh, closing up and uh, closing up my OBS Studio video capture application. I'm going to power cycle the uh, the Tiger Lake board. I'm going to relaunch OBS Studio, so uh, so I actually have a chance of of seeing the output that I want. And I want to launch the, my video capture device again and say, OK. And now I'm going to cycle up the Tiger Lake board again and, uh, and keep my fingers crossed that this time around when it, uh, when it starts coming up, I'll see my, uh, my splash screen here. So let's give it a, uh, oh, of course, my mistake. I'm wasting time. I have to. Uh, I haven't unplugged the HDMI cable out of the Whiskey Lake board and uh, and into the Tiger Lake board. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're going to do that now. Let's say. Uh, let me quickly uh, reset here and unplug the HDMI board, HDMI cable out of the one board and into the uh, into the second board. And. Let's see if we're lucky enough not to have to reset OBS Studio now. Let's see if we get my uh, splash screen. Oh darn! I went into uh, I went into Windows. You know, if I had time, I would show everybody some H Hyper V D debug on this thing. But um, but I really want to show Satoshi's uh, Satoshi's hypervisor. So I have to. I have to power cycle my board. And yeah, let's try that one more time. Got to get some, uh, uh, of course, it wants me to shut uh, Windows down, doesn't it? Okay. Normally, 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 normally. I have to, I know my password is incorrect. And I'm trying to get out of Windows. And uh, let's see. I need to do a shutdown here. <clears throat> well, there's one way to do it, and that is simply to power cycle. 
Okay. I knew that Murphy's Law would come back to uh, to get us on this sooner or later. All right, we're trying it one more time here and uh, and booting up. There's my splash screen and I'm hitting the F7 key here. And uh, and now I go in, I'm into the, uh, the enter password. So I'll just sit here and now we can actually launch source point and, um, and well, first, before we do that, let's actually you know, hit enter so we can go into the shell and we've got access to Satoshi's hypervisor here. All right. So as you can see, you know, we are in the shell and what we have is a USB stick plugged into this target. And it has on the stick, it has you know, Satoshi's hypervisor, EFI and uh, contents and some other miscellaneous files associated with some of the work that we was doing here. The application of interest is uh, shell app dot EFI. All right, and there's the help information associated with the shell app that Sochi has, run, has created in order to demonstrate you know, some of the functionality of the hypervisor. If, for example, you type in shell app dot EFI hypervisor, it shows up as blank. You know, there's there's no hypervisor content in here. We haven't loaded the hypervisor in, so we want to do that. And uh, and the way that you do that is with the the load uh, load command. And I, that is minivisor Dixie dot EFI. But before we do that, let's uh, let's take control of the target with source point. And uh, and set some interesting breakpoints, and uh, and show you know, how source point deals with hypervisor debug. So same thing, you know, we're launching the application, we're making the connection over DBC two with the target. And there's my traffic signals over here, and uh, in this instance, you know, we're going to actually halt at not at the reset vector, but we're going to halt. We're actually in the shell right now. So I'm going to hit the stop button. This will change from running to stopped. Go into the code window and you know, do a refresh. Here we are. You know, we can't look at the source code here because the Tiger Lake board does not have source code. In any event, we're in the uh, stop situation. And I'm going to hit create a, uh, you know, take advantage of some of the unique hypervisor debug breakpoint capability you know, within source point to, uh, to show off you know, some of the functionality of the tool. And uh, let's pick on you know, VM launch here first. And uh, we're going to set the, uh, the breakpoint there. And now it's active. The breakpoint is active. The green ball indicates that it's a software breakpoint, you know, which is, uh, which is fine. And now we can switch over and uh, let's load the, uh, the mini visor. Let's load the hypervisor. Uh, of course, first we need to uh, actually do a start and get the platform running again so that the shell actually does work. And now you'll see when I load the hypervisor, yeah, it actually locks up. The breakpoint was actually hit. And uh, if I go back into, uh, into source point, we see that the platform stopped with a VM launch breakpoint hit. And uh, I can see down here in the status bar that I am in VM guest mode, platforms stopped. Now, the nice thing about you know, most of Satoshi's implementation is we have the source code. So again, we have to go into the load current and we need to do that mapping now to the uh, to the class minivisor dixie.dll. Oh, and one thing I should show as well. Uh, speaking of open source, here is the uh, the VS Code project associated with uh, Satoshi's you know, distribution. So you've got the, some Hello World example programs, uh, Shell App, you know, which is the program that we were running. You know, that is the the demonstration of how the hypervisor handles causes for VM exit, control register, CPUID, and, and so on, right? As well as uh, all of the code associated with the, uh, the minivisor driver. So we're gonna do the, uh, the retry again and go into the 
class folder and walk our way through just like we did before and find our way through uh, the, um, the into the build folder. And we got to find that DLL associated with uh, the driver. And here it is. And when we do that, voila, we see the, the code. There's the instruction pointer, you know, where we actually halt, where the breakpoint actually halted. And you can see you know, we are in, we just entered virtualized processor. And here's Satoshi's code. And you can single step through the code and, uh, and do all sorts of, uh, of interesting things. I want to halt now because, um, yeah, I, I've probably exited successfully the, uh, I've exited successfully the, uh, as you might remember, it halt, yeah, it hung as we hit the breakpoint. Now that I went back and ran the target for a little bit, we're back in the shell. And the shell is, uh, is active again. So let's see, how are we doing for time? I got another couple of minutes. Just wanted to show the uh, the VM exit break in action. So we're going to go back into uh, in the breakpoints window. We're going to unclear this breakpoint, unset this breakpoint, disable it essentially, and oh, of course I got to be stopped. Sorry. Always something to keep track of. And now we can unclick it, and then we can add a a VM, a VM exit breakpoint. And let's call this VM2. And right down here, what we have is the mask associated with the VM exit basic exit reasons. And these are documented within the Intel SDM, the software developers manual, right in, our, in appendix C, you know, table C1, basic exit reasons. And uh, what we're going to do is, you know, since this is a, uh, a fairly commonly executed instruction, CPU ID, you know, we're going to trap on execution of a CPU ID instruction, which is basic exit reason 10, you know, within the mask. So, you know, to make things easy, I'm going to just hit zero here, clear all of the bits, go into the, uh, the mask editor, I'm going to turn on bit 10, which is the CPU ID, then I'm going to hit OK and OK. And my breakpoint for the VM exit is enabled. My breakpoint for the VM launch is not. And we should uh, hit go. And we're actually just based on the behavior of this target, we should hit the exit pretty quickly. And that's what we did, as you can see here. And this time we're in host mode, which, uh, which makes sense. So let's go over to the code window. Now, as it turns out, we don't have the code. We don't have all the code for this. We have a, uh, some of the symbols buried somewhere, but, uh, but this is an area for investigation. And uh, again, some of the finer points, the source point is you, if you hover over a, uh, a particular instruction, it will, also, it will give you the, uh, the full explanation of what it is. You know, right click and tool tips you know, just by hovering you know, over over some of the contents are uh, can be uh, can be extremely helpful and tell you exactly what the, what was stored in you know for example RCX or or you know what was a uh, you know what was going to be going to be executed you know the contents of some of the registers and uh, and variables. So what I'm going to do here is move my cursor over here, do a go cursor to the uh, to the beginning of that uh, that call. I have some symbols here handle VM exit, I just have to do a single step and that's going to take me into Satoshi's handle VM exit routine. And we do have the source code, of course, as part of the, 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 the project associated with, uh, with this class. I can uh, single step or, or move my way you know, over to, uh, to a particular line and do a ghost cursor to uh, yeah, to uh, to get to that line of code, and we can also see in here if we then switch to uh, to locals in the size of symbol window, 
we can see that we did trap on, and in fact, the MCS exit reason of 10. So that's the way it works. You know, I've, uh, I wanted to show everybody instruction trace and architectural event trace. You know, there's a, a, a lot of pretty cool things in here to see, uh, but uh, Michael, I think it might be a good place here to, uh, to pause because we do have the separate Q&A session yeah, you know, coming up, don't we? Uh, yes, absolutely, Alan. We do, but we do have a few questions that have been submitted uh, in the questions pane. So, do, do we have time for a few questions before we go to the uh, online help with uh, oh. on Microsoft Teams? Yeah, absolutely. Let's uh, let's try to cover off as many as we can in, in a short period of time. All right. So, yep, we'll begin to answer some of the questions that were submitted, and just as a reminder. You can still submit some questions through the questions pane in the attendee control panel. So, Alan, our first question is, I saw that there are two versions of the Aon Tiger Lake board, version 0000 and version 0001. Are they both supported? Oh, that's a good question. Yes. Um, when we launched the SourcePoint Home Initiative yeah, back in December, we were working initially with the Aon Tiger Lake uh, Up Extreme I-11, the version, what is now known as the uh, as the version zero. And and in fact, that's what I'm demonstrating on right here on, is the uh, the version zero. And Aon ran into uh, some part shortages, some supply chain issues. So they had to redesign the board and take off the Altera FPGA and the, the, the USB type C, they went to type A. And, uh, and then they released the board as uh, version one or 0001. We haven't ourselves yet tested on the uh, 0001, but we do, we do have a customer actually that just acquired a, a, a version one and uh, has done some initial testing and, uh, and found that run control DBC2 works just as it does on the version zero. So, uh, so we wanna be sure you know, before we yeah, say thumbs up and say we officially support that, but it's uh, it's looking good. So just watch this space, I guess. And um, yeah, I either follow me on Twitter. Yeah, keep an eye on my uh, blogs. We'll promote the support for the version one. You know, once it's uh, definitive. Okay, thank you, Alan. We do have another question. Does SourcePoint run on Linux and Windows? No, no, as a as an application, it's a uh, Windows application only, no Linux. All right, thank you. And another question, is there a plan to update the Whiskey Lake source code to the most current stable channel core release? That that is uh, that is an Intel question. Yeah, I Intel has done a a tremendous amount of work to uh yeah, to uh actually get us to where we are today in terms of having an open source platform that people can can work with right can look at and that runs on a board that you can buy you know for a couple hundred dollars and in conjunction with the source point home you can debug all of that and uh, and use trace and run control and, and learn all about it um, it's a uh, yeah it's uh, something that I think they have you know, in works and in planning but uh, but I don't have a date for that yet. All right, thank you. A few more questions. You know what, Michael? I think uh -huh. we need to uh, to pause. I've okay. got a couple more slides to, uh, okay. to wrap up on, and uh, and then we. Uh, I know people probably have a top of the hour. Some folks might have a top of the hour uh, something committed, so they won't be able to join the uh, the separate Q and A. But let's try to wrap this up in the next uh, five or so. Bear with me a second. I'm going to reshare my screen here and uh, and do a couple of wrap-up slides. All right. So so what you saw today is uh, the UEFI demo, open source uh, min platform, Kiana Core EDK2, all vanilla and available and running on that uh, Aon Whiskey Lake board. That was the first part of the demonstration. And that I think is just a fabulous platform for learning about UEFI, right, and low-level firmware, and and for those who have a uh, career aspirations in development and debug, and and having to know UEFI is a, is a great thing. Now the hypervisor debug was done on the Tiger Lake board. I 
simply because that's the one at least currently that boots easily enough to the uh, the shell. And if I up into uh, to Windows or Linux or uh, or whatever you want on that board, it's a more powerful of the two uh, boards. And uh, and that one's ideal in my view for open or even closed source source you know, hypervisor research and uh, and study. Satoshi's Minivisor, the uh, the bare flank hypervisor from AIS and Acorn, you know, some of the Windows uh, closed source implementations for Hyper-V, VBS, H-flat, and, uh, and all that. And, uh, and you know, the, the ideal platform, I think, for learning on how hypervisors work and doing cyber security research as well. Good resources is the uh, Tiano Core course right behind that open core, open source initiative. You know, Intel is uh, investing heavily in in trying to bring up the next generation of uh, hardware firmware x86 experts, and uh, they have a course ongoing right now at the UW you know, Tacoma University of Washington at uh, Tacoma, and uh, and. It's just a, uh, a great amount of material that's available via that link, presentation material that's that's part of the course. So anybody, you don't have to attend the course, but you can download and look at that material and uh, just an incredible you know, learning opportunity. They really revitalized some of the, uh, the older, older Tiana core training material there. So uh, you know, if there's interest in that, please work with uh, Harry, uh, he's, uh, just a, a great guy and uh, very open. And there's, uh, he, you know, he contributed you know, this text in uh, bold italics here. And there's his, uh, he volunteered his email address if anybody wants to reach out to him. Uh, take Satoshi's courses, highly recommended. On our website, you got the SourcePoint Academy. And then, uh, and then there's a bunch of webinar recordings on YouTube and on our website, work that we've done with the UEFI forum in the, uh, in the past. So, ah, the special offer just in time with a couple of minutes left. Thanks for sticking with us. If you're, uh, if you're still out there, uh, attendees are entitled to a, uh, a new low price. My marketing people are running amok here. They, they've taken a product that it was normally in the thousands of dollars and lowered it to $365. And for people who have been patient enough to bear with me for the, listen to me for the last hour, uh, you can, Go onto our website, send that email. You can get it for $199, and, uh, and this is a, uh, a limited, a limited time offer. Uh, my marketing people told me that that quantities are limited or restricted, as the uh, as the case may be. And uh, the promo code there is again, marketing people with a sense of humor, uh, a type of whiskey and a type of tiger. Bourbon Bengal, Bengal has to be in the subject line. So that's the uh, special offer and it ends in two weeks. So uh, we've gone through the questions. We've got separate Q&A session lined up. You can reach me directly via my email there or DM me on Twitter. My DM is open. And there's the link again for the Q&A, you know, which will follow up in a few minutes when we wrap up here. Back to you, Michael. Okay, hey, thank you, Alan. Anything else you wanna cover? That's it. All right. Well, thank you, Alan, and thank you, everyone, for attending today's webinar, DCI Debug of UEFI and Hypervisor Technologies on the Aon Up, Whiskey Lake, and Tiger Lake boards. If you have any other questions, please attend the Microsoft Teams Q&A. As you'll see the link in the uh, chat, I'll drop that in there, and you also see it on the screen. And just please make note of Alan's contact information. Uh, one thing we would ask is as you exit the webinar today, we'd appreciate if you would complete a survey on the presentation and provide us with your feedback. Uh, you'll also receive a follow-up email within 24 to 48 hours with a link to view a recording of today's webinar. And again, we'll be starting the Teams Q&A in five minutes. So on behalf of Asset Intertech and our presenter, Alan Squinia, thank you for joining us and have a great rest of your day. Thanks all. Bye now.